Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part 66 of Yakuza 0, and in this episode, we're going to continue the phone booth side quest, however, um, we also have to do this side quest first. Why, you may ask? Because one of the items that'll be asked for the phone booth side quest is the prize for this one. So, with that said, we're going to have to see a tragic tale unfold, and yeah... Let's be honest, folks. Yakuza series, tragedy pretty much is its M.O. You will see characters break down. You'll see tragic backstories. Like this guy's backstory, for instance. <clears throat> His backstory is basically... He was wanting to spend time with that mother and child, even though we threw the ball... And it turns out the mother and child is the guy's wife and son. And the reason why he wants to spend time with them is because of the fact in technicality he can't. Because he used to be a part of the Yakuza and he was forced to be made to disappear because the Yakuza wanted him dead. So to protect his family, he literally faked his death and changed his face. Oh, um, get used to people faking their deaths because, uh, that's gonna be a reoccurring thing throughout this series. Just saying. Anyway... The poor guy is really wanting to see his family again and this is the closest he could actually get towards them without getting the Yakuza involved but then again this is Yakuza happy endings are earned and not given and unfortunately staying out of the fight just does not work or just happily leaving the Yakuza just does not work if this story is anything to go by. And oh yeah, it's gonna get worse before it gets better as far as the story's concerned. We're just probably gonna do a couple of more side quests before while I'm trying to get the Cabaret Club Star done. Because as of the recording, I've just got Club Jupiter done. All I have to, and I'm starting on Mercury right now, so practically all I have to do is finish Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Well, Mercury, uh, Venus, and Moon, that's what I meant to say. And I'm pretty much done with the Cabaret Club Czar, and when I do that, it's on to Chapter 9. And pretty much the rest of the game. Which I probably would take a little hiatus on, because it'll maybe be encroaching into December by the time I finish the Czar. Uh, side quest, which, by the way, at least I'll have it finished by December, so I'll, like, take a hiatus from that, get ZX done, and go back into Yakuza 0. That's normally what I do whenever it comes down to the holidays, or I could just rearrange the schedule for that. But whatever the case, we also have another side quest that needs to be done, this one here. Because back in part 65, there was a wall that had graffiti on it. And uh, Majima is pretty much leaving a reply onto the wall. This time around, you can leave whatever reply you want. It does not matter. You can just pretty much uh, leave a reply and... You'll get a different result at the end, but it's pretty much going to continue the side quest no matter what. You don't get a pro. I mean, here's the thing. You'll still get the same prize regardless of whether or not you uh, pick any of these items. Okay, let me rephrase this. You will get a prize regardless of what you pick. The thing of the matter is, it's the, like, end of the cutscene or the side quest in general that will garner a different reaction. So I put I'm a sex crazed 
germ <laughs> on the wall. Because, you know, Majima did it because he thinks that, uh, he thinks that that wall is full of bullshit. He'll soon find out the truth. But as for, um, uh, our guy here, you just gotta come back here later on, and he'll be standing here waiting for, uh, well, his son, actually. Or more on the lines of watching over him. As a little boy is basically uh, watching the ants. I mean, it's kind of sad that he has to uh, keep away from his family. But then again, he joined the Yakuza. So in a way, since he brought all this trouble on himself. To be fair... There is a movie that would more than likely encourage a lot of Yakuza's, or at least would be Yakuza, to join the Yakuza. Or that, and also the whole entire enticement of easy money. But then again, nothing is easy in the world. You're going to end up having to do some really hard things that you normally would not do. Now, it doesn't matter what you, uh, ask the boy. At the end of the day, the quest will still continue. So, with that said, you actually get the revelation that the boy is sitting in the park by himself because his mother has to work due to the fact that his dad is, well, no longer with him. Or should I say hiding out from the Yakuza to try to make sure that he and his mother does not, you know, get killed. Uh, the more I look at this side quest, the more sadder I get. I mean, I had to hold back tears. My eyes are itching because I was crying because of this side quest. No matter how many times I do it, it, it just gets you in the feels, and Yakuza tends to do that. Oh boy, wait till we get to Yakuza 3. A as terrible as that game is, they do have some moments where it kicks you square in the nuts. Over and over and over again. And speaking of kicking things square in the nuts, oh look! He was trying to hide from the Yakuza, and sure enough, those guys are around. And they insist, by the way, on wearing unbuttoned shirts in the middle of winter. I mean, I know it's supposed to make you look cool, but, uh... Sometimes you gotta wear a button-up shirt. It's gonna be too damn cold for you to even be here. So, with that said, we're just going to have to go into the toilet once again. Or actually talk to the lady. Yes. We'll have to talk to the lady and finally we get to uh, put an end to this side quest because she will tell you that her son was supposed to be in the park to be picked up. However, it turns out that he's not here, but his ball is. Meaning one thing, either he was kidnapped or he's running for his life. So... We're practically going to be trans... Well, no, I don't think we're going to be transported over there. No, actually, where we need to go is right here. It's not too far. But due to the fact of Yosuke's dad trying to keep himself hidden, the Yakuza tried to come after him. So, he's hiding right underneath this... Uh, Right behind some Coke boxes, actually. That looks like Coke. It 
Drink God? I thought that was Coke. Oh, well. I never heard of Drink God, so, uh, I wouldn't know. Anyway... We're just gonna go back to the, uh, playground and unfor- well, the park, actually. And unfortunately, when you tried to bring the kid back to his mother, um, here comes the Yakuza, who, by the way, was pretty much spying on the guy the entirety of the time. And those same guys chased Yusuke up the street and just kidnapped his mom. And is holding her hostage. So... Now this guy has a choice. He has a choice to either off himself or his family gets it. Ah, that poor guy. It really does kick you right in the nuts. Especially when you realize that this is what he was trying to avoid. But you know, the Yakuza is relentless and they will hunt you down till the day you die. Preferably by their hands. Oh, no, that is if you really slide at the Yakuza. Sometimes they'll just use intimidation. Other times, they'll really carry out those threats, and they're not pretty. Well, look at it this way. At least they're not the Mafia. I mean, to be fair, the Mafia is pretty bad in its own right. But I'd say the Mafia is actually worse in that regard because at least, at least, the Mafia did not have to worry about a uh, certain ex-pro wrestler pretty much outlawing Yakuza. So, yeah. The Mafia is in the worst way possible. Actually, the worst possible solution. But, thanks to Yakuza saving the day and saving the wife and kid, now it's time for us to go beat up some goons. <clears throat> now then, bear in mind one thing. These guys are weapon masters. So, uh, you're better off using Slugger. Because, oh... Because if you thought you were going to use uh, Essence of Snake Bite against him, like I tried to do, nope. Slugger's the best solution. The most viable solution. And also, yeah, the bulletproof mirror does not... Oh, bulletproof glass does not work. It, it just doesn't work. <clears throat> I just put it on just now, and I still got damaged. Oh, by the way, that guy with the gun, I just took him out. He's done for. And I tried to get the knife to try to finish off this guy. But unfortunately, that did not work. We only got two more people. <coughs> oh, god damn it. Excuse me one second. Ah, bodily functions aside, I managed to beat that one guy, so now all we have is one more. I was trying to get the knife, but it's out of bounds and I won't let me get it. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to just use whatever I have. So, yeah, get bent. And I only got 527,000 from that? Okay, whatever. Oh, right, because it's early on, that's why. This was in Chapter 3, if I'm not mistaken. So, with that said... At least... The Pursuers of... Arakani... Uh, Akatani, yes, that's the name of the guy. Who happens to change his face. His Pursuers are finally gone. 
So, um, all that needs to be said is, yeah, this man is a full-blown Yakuza who just went full-on Taken, mind you, and goddamn ringtone. Anyway, he just went full-on Taken on every single Yakuza, and that kid knew right away who that guy was. Unfortunately, again, he had to fake his death to make sure that things that are precious to him are not taken from him. Now, funny thing is, again, this isn't the first time that somebody had to fake their deaths to protect their loved ones. This happens in later games. More importantly, this is the prize that we came for, the Sakura Storm. And for the record, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we need to complete the phone booth side quest. And why do we need that so badly? That also brings us another hostess for the Cabaret Club Czar. Which, by the way, you're going to be seeing in part 60... No, actually, no, seeing in this part here. I thought it was going to be the next part. No, it's going to be this part. You'll see that probably at the end, at least. Because there is one more thing that needs to be taken care of. And that thing, ladies and gentlemen, just so happens to be... Oh, by the way, that's the reason why it cr that made me cry so much. Because of the fact that the poor guy had to play catch one last time. And he had to bear witness to the fact that he'll never be able to see his son again due to the Yakuza. But, we still have the whole thing with the bathroom graffiti, which pretty much kind of lightens the mood. Which is why I did both of them at the same time. Because, yeah, the bathroom graffiti has a pretty odd and hilarious twist. Whereas, what we just went through, it was kind of heartwarming and sad. Well, actually, no, it was 100% heartwarming and sad. Or heart-wrenching, if you will. If you stop and think about it, your father had to uh, pretty much abandon his way of life and abandon his family just to make sure nothing happens to his family. Now, we're on to why the toilet side quest is actually the funniest one. Because Majima went to the phone booth as per the toilet's instructions. <laughs> and unfortunately, he's about to get jumped by a couple of guys waiting for him. Apparently, this was a part of a scam where these guys write on the bathroom and lure people out thinking that they were going... that Those people thinking that they're going to get laid. Instead, they get beat up and mugged. So, what we're going to do... For playing with a person's desires, we're going to have to beat these guys half to death. Why? Because nobody gets in the way of a man and getting laid. Seriously. That's like rule 101. And using it for a con? That's just ridiculous. I mean, who in their right mind to every single internet ad pretty much in existence? But nonetheless... Let's just beat up all these goons here. Hooligans, they have pretty low health, considering the fact that this quest was also available in Chapter 3 or 4. I think it was 3. But nonetheless, these guys do not have the health to actually uh, deal with you. So, yeah. I'm about to make short work of all these guys. Well, that is if I could actually catch them in the middle. Come on. There we go. Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! And that takes care of these guys, and now I need one more person to fall. And that's gonna be you. Uh, switch over. Switch over styles, dude. You're not getting any. Never mind, I was about to say you're not getting any. Whoa! Wow! Five million? Holy crap! Um, that's a lot of money from these guys. And by the way, that was literally early on in the game. 
Oh, and for the record, you get Calming Towel, which, by the way, is only good once you fully unlocked Breaker. Because Breaker, if I'm not mistaken, has a um, neutral stance uppercut where you can counter an enemy and it can one-shot normal um, mooks, but do serious damage to um, bosses. Particularly Mr. Shakedown. Like two or three bars worth. And that calming towel definitely will come in handy because the lower your uh, the lower your heat the higher damage you do. So it's kind of a insta-kill sort of thing if you will. So that's basically what that's for. And, oh! That's the lady by the way who wrote on the wall! And depending on your choice, um, she may actually say something different. Anyway, now it's on to the phone booth. Hand over the tourmaline, and by the way, in case you're wondering where the tourmaline is, go to Dragon and Tiger, and send out one of your scouts to the jungle in South America to get Tromeline. You'll get it guaranteed no matter how much money you put in there. Or alternatively, you can get it randomly from the uh, Dream Machine. Because yes, you can get Tromeline from Dream Machines. And if you do, that'll save you a hell of a lot of trouble. As a matter of fact, you could also get the Sakura Storm from a Dream Machine. In fact, Kiryu actually got one too, I think. And if so, I could have sent it to Majima and I didn't even think about it. So, with that said... Majima has one more weapon. And I think it has the... Well, yeah, I have to turn in the Sakura Storm, which we just got. For the record, you could complete this in Chapter 3. Which, honest to God, um, it would be easier on you if you did. But the reason why it wouldn't necessarily be completed until now, because the Cabaret Club Czar wouldn't be open in Chapter 3. So on that note, hand over the Sakura Storm. And you will have one last mission to go to. No, I'm not kidding. You will have to do one last little detail for Simon. The guy who's been giving you the runaround for all these parts ever since part 65 when we first started that quest. And I wish they stopped sending me spam for MasterCard offers. Anyway. Uh, it's time to head over to the Foot Plains in the south. For those of you who don't know where exactly the uh, guys you're looking for are going to be. You'll have to go to the Foot Plains in the south. And that is where they will be. Now, a good thing I should mention about the Sotenbury foot planes. Um, sometimes, if you happen to get into an encounter on the way there, you could just simply go to the foot planes. Sometimes they won't follow you, then again, sometimes they will. But... At least the foot planes, you don't have to worry about Mr. Shakedown appearing there because he's not. He's only going to be on the roads. So that's the only good thing about the foot planes. I rarely seen the man on the foot planes at all. So if you're fishing or trying to look for items that happen to be there, by all means, take the foot planes. All right. What we just did was uh, 
get to 80%. And now for the final part of this friendship side quest, we're going to have to go to the Foot Plains and meet up with a bunch of people and beat them up. Because apparently, they are in cahoots with each other. Oh. Excuse me, I didn't mean to yawn. I meant to say they were probably going to come after Simon and possibly kill him. At least that's what uh, Simon just told us. And sorry for the yawning. I really apologize for that. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit tired and it's almost the Thanksgiving holidays. So by the time this is going to go out, in fact... Thanksgiving is in about a couple of days of this being released. So bear that in mind. So, this is the group of guys you want to fight. These guys shouldn't be a problem considering if you have full heat and you're right next to a river, you can just send them all there. That would make things a hell of a lot easier. Anyway, let's go back. Beat up these guys. But first, Majima at least try to confirm which one of them is Simon. And unfortunately, not a single one of them. But they will try to kill you because you're in cahoots with Simon. So let's go on ahead and put them out of their misery. Bear in mind, these guys are also weapon masters as well. Get rid of the guys with the guns. <clears throat> You're about to see something also hilarious, by the way. This ball buster right here. <laughs> just, it just bounced him in the air. <laughs> this, I love this weapon. I just smacked those guys around, and he fell right off the damn cliff. Oh yes, the ball buster is fucking hilarious. But now that we went there and beat those guys, this should complete the side quest. Because all we have to do is go back to the phone booth where Simon was and actually confirm that his, his attackers, quote unquote, are defeated. And thankfully, we won't have to worry about that side quest for quite some time. Because it'll be over. Duh. <clears throat> I'm guessing this is the phone booth over here. I could be wrong, but... No, it's not that one. No, it's on the other side. But, wait a minute. How did I run this fall? Oh, I gotta go a little bit lower. It's okay. It's okay. At least we're not going past chapter 8. Because once we get through with some of these side quests and get through, um... If push comes to shove, I'll just make the cabaret czar... Uh... Well, I'll just put the cabaret czar on the last, uh... Couple of parts to make up for the fact that I'm just trying to finish the cabaret czar. Then, afterwards... Oh, yeah. I'll go on ahead and proceed to chapter 9 and possibly finish out the rest of the game because quite frankly we'll have um, enough money and also enough skills to pretty much beat the rest of the game and also I'll have Mad Dog of Majima, I mean Mad Dog of Samano, I almost called it Mad Dog of Majima unlocked So, our reward for going through all of this with Simon, by the way. Our reward is simple. We're going to end up with, um... We're going to end up with Unknown. A hostess, by the way, who has no name, but is on the run from Simon. Because Simon actually is a person who, uh is in control the entirety of the time. Ah. Look on the bright side. At least, Unknown is a gold hostess, 
and more importantly, Unknown will definitely benefit you in uh, Cabaret Club Czar, especially in Club Venus. As soon as you get her, you might want to level her up. And hell, level up all of your backups. Specifically for Club Venus. Because when I come to the parts of Club Venus, you'll know why. <clears throat> so, anyway. The game has been finished. Well, at least his little game. So... You'll end up leaving the booth, and again, you'll get unknown. Ironically, if you don't get money this time around. Well, I hope I do. Did he even leave anything underneath the phone book? Oh, no. Actually, again, a hostess. But primarily, after doing Unknown, well, at least doing the quest to get Unknown, altogether, I think I managed to get one million from this guy. So, yeah, you might want to do this side quest. If not for Unknown, more importantly, for the money. So, uh... Yeah, this woman's pretty damn desperate. Uh, <clears throat> at least we can get her as a hostess, and I'm pretty sure she's not the sexy type, but she is a uh, beauty, cute, and funny, and on top of the fact is a good talker. Again, perfect for Club Venus. So I'll see you all in part 67 when we meet Mr. Moneybags, and I think we're going to do another side quest also. This is Man 95 Peace out, and take care.